You're listening to Blood's Call with J.R. Rivero Kinsey. In 2015, I met my father for the first time after two years of detective work using results from a DNA kit and public records. The experience changed my life. Since then, I've heard the stories of countless others searching for biological family, some with happy endings, some heartbreaking. And I realize the importance of sharing these stories not only with each other, but with the rest of the world. Blood's Call invites adoptees, orphans, donor children, and children of one-parent homes to discuss their thoughts about finding biological family and what it's like to grow up not knowing where you come from. and thank you so much for listening. Today, for the very first episode of Blood's Call, I thought it fitting to have a conversation with my own brother. Paul was given up for adoption by our mother before I was born. I didn't learn of his existence until I was 14, and we didn't meet until I was 19. Little did we know, we grew up just 20 minutes away from each other. Hi, bro. How you doing? Hey, sis. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing really well. Thank you. And I just want to say, first of all, before we start, thank you so much for doing this. It feels really, really special to have you as my first guest. So when I was thinking about some of the things that I'd like to ask you, it occurred to me that, you know, you and I have talked a lot about some of the things that happened in your childhood and when you and I met and our feelings surrounding those events but it occurred to me that we've never actually talked about your adoption itself. And one of the things that I was wondering is when did you, if you can remember, when did you first understand that you were adopted? Uh, well, I, I don't ever remember not knowing that I was adopted. Okay. I don't know when I understood what that meant, like as compared to other kids. Um, but I remember being three and four and just knowing that I was adopted. There was, it was never a secret. I was never told later. Um, so yeah, but as far as understanding what that means, I didn't have a clue until later. Do you remember when that was that you started to really understand it? Uh, not really. I remember being in elementary school and occasionally some kid would try to use it as a, something to bully me with when they found out. Um, but compared to all the other crap that you could get bullied about, about in elementary school, that was nothing. <laughs> like I have nothing to be ashamed about. Yeah. Um, so that I, I, I know that I understood it by like, you know, first, second grade, but I, I don't ever remember there being some sort of like moment where okay where it just dawned on me what it meant did that make you feel any particular way i mean do you have any sort of i guess i've never actually spoken to an adoptee about what it feels like growing up knowing that you're adopted no i had no particular way of I mean, nothing occurred to me as, you know, as you get older, things occur to you, Yeah. right? You know, that you realize that your parents chose you, that that wasn't, you weren't, you knew you weren't an accident. Yeah. You, know, you knew you weren't a drunken mistake. At, at a certain point, you figure all that out, that your parents actually wanted, went out and sought to have a kid um, and brought you into their family. Um, and then, of course, at some point you realize that they probably couldn't have kids on their own, so that turns into a whole big thing, mm-hmm. um, that, that that understanding. And it wasn't until after we met, before my dad and I actually had a conversation about it. Um, but, yeah, no, I don't remember any time as a kid thinking it was odd or unusual or any kind of big revelation about it. There's something that I knew and, and never thought one way or the other about, really, yeah. until I got you know junior high and high school and I started to wonder <clears throat> about the existence of my biological family. Yeah. I imagine when you're little, it's sort of like you, you don't have anything to sort of gauge against or have, yeah. you know, you don't have any other kind of reference. Yeah. yeah. So, um, 
Do you know much? I think it might have been part of too that for the you know, my family that I was raised with, I was by far the youngest cousin. Like my sister is two years older than me, uh-huh. and I think the next I think the next closest cousin is eight or nine years older, and he's a second cousin. And then my first cousins are like ten years older than me. So okay. there weren't any other family members in my life that had biological parents that I could was hanging out with and have any kind of comparison with. Okay. So do you know much about what happened between the time when our mother gave you up and when you were adopted? How how much has your mother told you about that? She doesn't know much herself. They knew they were getting me about a month and a half. It would have been right around Christmas, 1969 is when they, they figured out they were getting me. And I remember seeing a photo album when I was in, you know, young of the day they got me, but it didn't occur to me until after I met you, well after I met you, that that date on that photo, and the, I think there's a Super 8 film of it too, the day they got me. Oh, wow, I'd love um, to see that. Where it's it survived all the moves from my mom. Hmm. Hmm. That's interesting. Uh, anyway, the date on that was like mid-February. I think it was around Valentine's Day, 1970. So it didn't, you know, and then then I, I, I realized I was in foster care for two months, and I have no idea you know, who was fostering me, what they called me, nothing. I have no information on it. Wow. Um, I did mail off to, well, submitted the form online to uh, um, Ohio to get my, my – uh, original adoption file but it was like nothing it was the copy of my original birth certificate and that's i think it there's nothing i think all of it all the paperwork for it is with you know my original adoption agency in bumper county ohio wow that's yeah i I, I don't have any idea and my, my birth certificate had it had almost no information on it at all it's incredible nothing that i didn't really know yeah Just speaking to other people who have adopted children more recently, I think things have changed a lot. And it, it's oh, just yeah. a, it's just amazing to me how sparse the information was and, and how they didn't really think any of that was important back then. You know, it seems really cruel. And I'm sure there were a lot of people who were, you know, very big hearted people who were involved in the adoption system, but there was so much of it that was so, um, just thoughtless about how the child would feel when they became older, you know, and, and would want to know these things. It was sort of, I think one of the main frustrations with people who are searching for biological family, I know in my case was, um, I had a lot of anger about, how no one thought it would be important to me to know. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So um, w- how old were you when you started thinking about your birth parents? Uh, it was late junior high, high school. Wow. I definitely knew then that I was at some point going to try to track you down. Yeah. Uh, of course, I didn't know you, but, you know, yeah. my <laughs> biological family. Yeah. Um. I knew then. I didn't. I no. I have no idea when I would have actually pulled the trigger and tried, but um, I knew I wanted to know. Yeah. And by that point, my my dad was a teller of tall tales. Basically, he was a really terrible liar. Um, <laughs> and uh, he would tell me things to try to inspire me. Like he told me my birth father was a professional athlete. Like I knew I. I knew he was full of shit. I'm, I'm sorry, <laughs> wow. I'm to swear on this thing. I knew he was. I, I I was like in eighth grade when he told me this. And I knew then that he had to be full of crap because I was the very unathletic kid. There's no way. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way a professional athlete has. You definitely get that from our side of the family. <laughs> you know, the nerdy kid that can't, you know, do anything athletic at all. What did he tell you about your mother? Uh, nothing, actually. Really? Nothing. He never told me. No, no lies about that one at all. Oh, Didn't that's pretend, interesting. Like, there <laughs> yeah. Was there any particular thing that made you decide you wanted to do it, or was it just sort of a, a natural evolution that just sort of happened? I 
it was probably just had to do with my relationship with my dad and how bad it was. Oh. You no. Know? And plus, I, I think I just wanted to know. I was just curious. It was just a yeah. curiosity thing. Yeah. You did have a really good relationship with your mother, though, right? Um, yeah, yeah, better than my dad, which isn't saying much, but yeah, a lot. <laughs> I, mean, I, I have a lot of respect for my mom as a kid. Yeah. Um, yeah, very close with her. That's good. So, um, I guess we, we talked about this a little bit before, um, feeling different from your family in any kind of conscious way, but I guess, um, instead of the sense of a conscious, oh, I'm adopted, were there ways that you just thought, you noticed how you were very different and in just your nature from your adopted family that made you feel like it was because you were, you were not their biological family that you got these traits from someone else. Not that I put together until I met you. Okay. Rebecca, because like looking back on it, I was very, physically affectionate like I would hug my mom and kiss her on the cheek every morning before I left for school and mm -hmm. same with my dad if he was around mm -hmm. and just little things like that that I would do and nobody else not not just in my immediate family but nobody else in either side of that family was ever like that it, we get together for Christmas and it was all handshakes and how's work it's not mm -hmm. you know obviously as an adult but as a kid you know it, it was just very they were happy to see each other but nobody ever hung on each other and you're meeting you and then eventually meeting the extended family and watching Rebecca's siblings like not just hug each other but hang on each other when they're around <laughs> each other like physically arm in arm heads on shoulders like, like okay that's where that comes from <laughs> <laughs> yeah so you and your sister were both adopted and you know I've heard a lot of people's stories at this point and everyone is different. You know, it's sort of like some people really want to find their biological family. Others have no interest at all. And in what ways have you noticed that you and your sisters are different in the way you've processed your experience? She doesn't talk about it too much. I am. She took the time like probably five, six years ago now and got her original birth certificate from Ohio. Um, and she sat on it, like she got it. And then, and she was something her and her boyfriend were talking about and they kind of did it together and she wasn't all that enthused about it anyway. And then she sat on it and she finally agreed to give it to me and I tracked down her biological mother, um, and all her siblings. And she has four or five brothers. Um, and I connected with them on Facebook and as I got to know them and they talked about their mom, um, Jenny's biological mother, it became pretty clear. And they said outright that Jenny was better off not having been raised by the woman because they were raised by their grandmother. It yeah. wasn't a pretty thing. Um, mm -hmm. And once Jenny got that information, she wanted absolutely nothing to do with them. She won't. She has not a friend of them on Facebook, has not talked to any of them. She just not even her siblings. Has no interest in talking to him. Wow. So yeah, I don't. You know, I I tried to convince her to you know to at least contact them and find out about you know family illnesses or anything like that, and she just didn't have any interest in it at all. Um, and I get it. I had friends in college that were siblings and and uh, also adopted, and one of them really wanted to know, and the other one had zero interest. So it happens. It's pretty normal. And I guess. I mean, the same thing sort of happened with you, not in quite the same way, not to that extreme, but so you, you did find your biological father as well, who, so you and I have different fathers, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. And the experience wasn't the same as meeting us. No. Um, well, I don't know. It's kind of hard to explain because he never knew I existed. First of all, yeah. he had no clue that you know, Rebecca never told him that she was pregnant mm -hmm. and just banished on him. Um, so it was kind of a surprise thing. And I deliberately, when I told him, I did it in a way to try to lighten the mood. <laughs> um, but, uh, 
but no, it was, there wasn't that immediate connection that I had with you. And I think part of that is that you sought me out and you, you know, you obviously wanted to meet me. So I felt a lot closer to you and he yeah. wanted to meet me too, but it was, again, he had three other, I have three, two brothers and a sister through him that I've never met. Um, and probably won't ever. Um, although I am connected with one of them on Facebook. Um, but no, there wasn't that immediate connection with him that I felt with you guys and we're cordial, but no real desire to call him family in any way. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't have any desire to get to know your siblings either? I, no, I mean, no, not really. There was the one I connected with in Facebook, on Facebook. Turns out when I was living in Jacksonville, she's also there. And she invited me to get together. Uh, we had talked about it on Facebook a bit. Um, but when she finally invited me to come over and meet her family, it was her, her son's high school graduation party. And I didn't want to be like, hey, I'm the uncle you've never met before. That would like take his moment away. I didn't feel like I want to step on his moment. So yeah. I declined the invitation and it, we just, after that, never talked about it again. And you haven't spoken to the others at all? No, I don't even know if they know my name. I have no wow. idea. Wow. Yeah. That's a trip. So, so then you, I think this is something that I, I'm not sure if I have the story right. So you um, submitted your information to the adoption agency that you wanted to be found, that you wanted to meet your birth mother, right? Well, no. Um, I was living in Oxford at my going to college, and um, my parents called and said they needed to talk about something. And I'm thinking, oh, great, this is going to suck. Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't say what it was, and they drove up and, and, uh, and pulled in the parking lot and told me the story that um, Rebecca had contacted the adoption agency and she wanted to meet and that they, they, they were going to call me in. They were going to give me a form to sign. And I basically, I signed it and gave it to the adoption agency. I think I faxed it there and this was 91. And then Rebecca did the same thing and we swapped phone numbers. Oh, okay. I guess I had completely remembered wrong the story. Um, yeah, no. And I, as far as I know, it was all your idea that it was, that you pressured her to to make it happen when it happened. Really? Yeah, she told me she was waffling on the idea, and it was all your pressure. That oh, I don't remember do that at all. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> huh. I think I told you this story that I didn't know about you. Mom never said anything about it, and and I found out about you when I was 14, because Aunt Helen had told our cousin Andrea, and Andrea told me. <laughs> I still rem I remember the moment really clearly. And I was, we were all visiting in Connecticut at the time, just us cousins, and we were at Uncle Ed and Aunt Kathy's house, and it was, n was it nighttime? I just remember we were in Brian's room, <laughs> and... I think it was just Andrea and I, I don't remember what else we were talking about. And she just says, you have a brother. <laughs> I still remember it so clearly. And it was such a surreal moment. You know, she, her, she told me about it and, you know, I don't remember her exact wording after that, but it was just so surreal. And I mean, it, I loved the idea, you know, that I had this brother out there because I had no siblings at the time. You know, Annie wasn't born until we were much older. And so I remember being really excited about it, but it was also just so strange. And there was part of me that was sort of questioning if it was really true. And I never asked mom about it. I never, I never talked to her about it. I'm not sure why, maybe just because of the way the situation was at home that I, I didn't feel comfortable or something. And then she didn't 
she didn't tell me until I was 17 and going crazy and, <laughs> and, you know, and she was trying to discourage me from going down the path that I was going, which of course it didn't work. I got pregnant by the time I was 18, but you know, she, she wanted to tell me what happened with her. And so she told me about you and of course, I told her that I already knew, and which infuriated her. <laughs> <laughs> she was pretty upset with Aunt Helen. <laughs> so... <laughs> but, um, yeah, I don't remember pressuring her to, to find you, though. That's really interesting. I think maybe she ah. had mentioned it, and then I was I, I said, go for it, you know? but I don't remember being the instigator of it, but, um, yeah. So, um, so how did you feel in that moment when your, when your parents told you that we were looking for you? I was you? excited. Were you? I was excited. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 like I said, I always wanted to find out, uh -huh. but I, I also knew that I would like, put it off and put it off and put it off and never pull the trigger and oh. it would have been I have no idea when I actually would have done it myself if, if if it had been left up to me so yeah I was excited were you surprised to find out that you had sisters oh yeah very surprised yes and so what what are your what do you remember about meeting us what what sticks out in your mind I still remember that day really clearly and I remember sitting in the airport and that was actually the first time i mean mom had told me about you but she had never actually talked about the moment of giving you up and it was i mean just heartbreaking because she she didn't want to you know it was our grandfather yeah. that really pressured her into it and she just described the moment of of having to hand you over and she you know at that point they weren't even supposed to allow the mothers to hold the babies at all but apparently mom was crying so much and I can knowing mom I can totally imagine this that she was very <laughs> probably very vocally um upset and so the nurse felt sorry for her and let her hold you for a little while and gave her a photo. And But she just described the moment of when they carried you away. And I can't remember exactly what how, how she said it, what her words were, but it was just totally heartbreaking, you know? Yep. And, and yep. to imagine her that young and going through that alone, you know, I, I don't think she had anyone with her. Maybe Aunt Helen yeah. was with her, but I don't think so. I think she was alone, and it's just awful. You know, she showed me that picture just like two months ago. It's the first time I've seen it. Really? Yeah, the infant picture. Yeah, I had never seen it. My mom hadn't seen it either. Oh, wow. Wow, yeah, I guess you would have never seen any photos of yourself as a newborn just from yep. two months on. Wow. Yep. Oh. Yeah, so sweet. <laughs> it's such a sweet photo. So yeah, so what was it like meeting us? It was exciting, um, but I was, you know, I was 21. I was all about getting drunk as much as possible, and, <laughs> you know. So coming to, coming to meet you guys was great, but partying with you while I was in Boise was, you know, that was all I was really interested in doing, was hanging out <laughs> with you and getting, getting drunk the whole weekend, so... Did we yeah. do that? I don't remember. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. I got so wasted at your house. It was the one over by that school near, near the house house you lived in. Oh, my God. I was so drunk that night. Oh, that's yeah, funny. I don't stupid. remember that at all. Yeah. One of the funny things I remember is that we realized that we both like our pizza the same way. Like sausage <laughs> with extra sauce <laughs> and not too much <laughs> cheese. <laughs> Yeah, we, we got drunk and we went out to like the most expensive restaurant that you could think of. Really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Man, I have no recollection of this at all. <laughs> well, you must have been drunk too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Well, yeah, I'd say we've definitely 
<laughs> both grown a lot <laughs> since that yeah. time. And yeah. I, you know, and I think our relationship is, has deepened a lot too. You know, I think I, yeah. you know, I've opened up a lot just emotionally and, and especially since I found my dad, I think that really, that really changed me in a lot of ways. And I think it's given me even a, a deeper appreciation for the family that I have on this side, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I think I asked you this before, but how have your, your feelings or your experience of being adopted changed with time? Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, other than just the weirdness of saying, you know, I've got two sisters named Jenny, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, and explaining it to people, it's, you know, a good conversation starter sometimes. Um, <laughs> but I, for me, I, I think about it a lot, like what might my life have been like if I hadn't been adopted? You know, you and I talked about this, would you exist? If she had me, if she hadn't been forced to give me up, would you, would you even exist? Would she have had you? I don't would think she have I met would. Bill? Yeah. Would, would she have met Bill? Would Bill have put up with me? Would my childhood be like yours was with Bill? Would Annie exist? You know, all that, all that stuff. It's just weird to think about that. But as far as my experience with my parents, I don't think it's changed at all. They were very cool with meeting me, meeting you guys and, you know, they, they flew Rebecca in for my first wedding <laughs> um, and um, welcomed her like she was family. Um, yeah. But it's just been, I found an extra family, I guess is the, you know, the, the best part about it. It's yeah. Some, you know, an extra set of people that, you know, your family. Yeah, absolutely. So, I think the thing that I've noticed the most meeting you and, and meeting my dad, which is such a strange experience that people who haven't been through it, just, they just really don't understand that the connection, how strong it can be. You know, I know there's yeah. people that, that meet biological family and don't feel anything, but there's a lot of people who do feel a really strong connection that seems it's just really difficult for someone from the outside to understand and the things that you notice that you just uh like you say that the certain traits that that you know didn't come from the way you were raised, but they come from somewhere else, somewhere deeper, something biological. Um, yeah. What are your thoughts about that? I mean, how, and also just like the strange, uh, the strange coincidences, like the fact that my name, my first name is Jenny and your <laughs> adopted sister's name is Jenny. And the fact that your your adopted parents, your parents named you Paul Richard and my mother had named you Ricardo, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and just all of these bizarre little things that you, you know, sometimes I wonder is just like, is that such a coincidence? Or you hear about people meeting their siblings for the first time, two sisters, they show up and they're dressed exactly alike, <laughs> you know, and they didn't plan it. <laughs> and... I don't know. Sometimes I I really wonder, like, what is this thing that that happens with our people that we are biologically related to? You know, I I just chalk it up to coincidence. I I joke and tell people that uh, I was destined to be a dick. So. <laughs> <laughs> um. You're much less but sentimental no. about it than I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but as far as like the connection, like I have, I, I understand both sides because like obviously I'm not that close with my biological father, but I'm also not that close. I don't feel that connection with any of your aunts and uncles, any Rebecca siblings or yeah. 
the cousins. Like I wasn't raised hanging out with all the cousins, so yeah. I'm not close with any of them. Um, but on the other hand, with you and Annie, there's no question that you're my sisters. Like in my head, I don't think of you really as anything else. Mm-hmm. And you know, Rebecca's my mom, but then she's not my mom because she didn't raise me. So it's more complicated than that. But I think of her like a mother, even though she's not because she didn't raise me. So it's complicated. Yeah. But, you know, I love yeah. her like a mother. So, yeah. So I guess um, one of the things that I, one of the last things I'd like to ask you about, which it could be a sensitive subject or it could not be, but talking again about the adoption system, did you ever feel frustrated or angry at the, at the, at the system itself? Mm, not really for how my adoption went. Um, mine was pretty standard at the at the time. Um, I think that it's wrong that, our grandfather could make her pressure her to give me up for adoption like that. Um, but when you read the stories of other adoptees, you realize that what she was going through was nothing compared to what some people went through back in the fifties and Mm sixties when they got pregnant. It was, some of them were just very, very ugly stories and adoption is better, but it's still messy for, in most ways it's expensive. Most of the time, most people that do it, um, inexpensively do it through fostering first. I have multiple friends that have adopted through the foster care system, which is great, but, um, there's a certain amount of uncertainty with that that happens that you're kind of want the biological parents to get their shit together and, and, you know, raise their, raise their kids, but then you, you're raising their kids and you love them and really don't want them to go. So, and there's a lot of complication there too. Um, so the whole thing, it's, Better than it was, especially with keeping, you know, with with understanding who the birth parents are, but it's still not a very well done system. And then, of course, you get into the whole, should the biological fathers be told, Um, which I think they should. I think it was wrong of Rebecca not to tell either one of our biological fathers that she was pregnant by them. Yeah. Um, Yeah. I went through a very expensive, and I don't know if you want to edit any of this out, um, but I'm fine staying it on the podcast, but I went through a very expensive and contentious divorce to, and the whole expense of it was so I could get 50, 50 custody of my kids. And because of that, I am now involved in father's rights movements. And Mm -hmm. there is a lot of discussion online about what little rights biological fathers have with their kids. Like, if you're not married and you get a woman pregnant, it is an expensive proposition to get custody of your kid. If she wants to put the kid up for adoption and it's, you know, it's yours and she doesn't put your name on the birth certificate, you have no rights. There's all kinds of issues around that. They're just a mess. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to discuss with people because they don't live it. They didn't go through it. They don't have no personal experience with it. They don't understand. They think that they think there's, on the one hand, there's, you know, we've made strides in gender equality, but then on when it comes to issues like this, and it, it's they treat it like it's the abortion issue where it should just be a choice that the mother gets to make and the man should have no say. But this is not an aborted baby. This is a living baby that just because the mother doesn't want it, why would the father not have the first right of refusal to adopt it if it's is you know um so there's lots of issues around it that are all very messy and um it's better than it was in the 50s and 60s but it's still not great yeah Um, i have a question for you if you don't mind absolutely so did you feel sort of ripped off when you met your uh biological father and realized that you didn't have any siblings no i i I didn't. I think when I was younger, I thought about, um, because I didn't have siblings growing up, because Annie wasn't born until I was 17 and already out of the house. I think that was one of the things that I really thought about, um, is, gosh, do I have siblings out there? I would, I 
would like to, you know, um, but with such a long search for my father, by the time I found him, I don't think, um, that was really at the top of my list of concerns. I was, <laughs> I was just so excited that I had finally found him and also really, truly terrified that he would reject me. I don't think I've yeah. ever, ever been so scared in my life. I was just, um really, really, um, afraid that he wouldn't want to know me. And I, I, so, and then what happened, I guess, is that I realized that I got him all to myself. <laughs> 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 Though I, I do have stepsisters and, and they're great actually. Um, I've only met one of them because one of them wasn't living in South Carolina at the time. And, um, so I got to meet my stepsister, Sarah, who right away said, no, we're sisters. We really, um, it was, it was interesting. Like she seems very different from me on the surface, but, um, I just felt a real bond with her right away. So that was really cool. But they're also a lot younger than me. They're in their twenties still, I believe. And I am not <laughs> in my 20s. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I, my dad doesn't really have much family left. He has a brother in Florida that um, is very different from him. And they're not particularly close. I think they love each other, but they're just very, very different people. And then he was very close with some of his cousins, but they live out of state and he hasn't seen them for many years. And so all of the family that he has is the family that he's married to, who are wonderful, wonderful people. And, um, <clears throat> and so it's been lovely meeting all of them and they've accepted me and I have a stepmother and yeah, yeah, it's, it's gone really well. I'm lucky. I'm very lucky. That's great. So, this has been really great. It's been really great having yeah. this conversation with you. Love you, bro. Love you. Take care. Thank you for tuning in. If this subject interests you and you'd like to read more stories like these, visit our website at bloodscall.com. 